Oh, well, we'll just go for it. Yeah, let's go for a yeah. sound footage. Yeah. This is all recording. Yeah. yeah. Eyes up. Eyes up. Hey. I want to make it feel that it's okay to tell a story by just saying how grateful I am. This is how grateful I am to be in the Pacific Northwest. Nature here in the Pacific Northwest is is dramatic. It, it goes from mountains to, to oceans, you know, the elevation change is dramatic and it's diverse. It's diverse, it's just got so many colors and so many, uh, so many different species of plants and, and animals and um, it's just dynamic. Uh, you know, a, a lot of people describe nature like this sleeping beauty. Um, that's not how I felt when I came to the Pacific Northwest, I think. Nature here is, a le is you know, it's a, it's a living, breathing uh, creature, if that makes sense. It's, it's majestic, it's, um, it's there, it's trying to be with you. It's not letting you just, oh, take a nice, comfortable hike. It's like, no, you know, if you want to be a part of me, come with me, come on this journey. Nature here is alive. Right. Yeah. Who are you? Uh, I'm Wei. I'm 34 year old here living in Seattle, um, working in tech and exploring nature with my friend Alex over here. What kind of story do you want to tell us today? Yeah, I think I just want to tell a personal story. You know, I had a lot of different ideas coming to this project. There were so many little things I wanted to tell and a lot of little messages here and there. But I think the longer we've been doing this project, the more I just want to feel heard and I want to help others feel heard. You came here when you were 11, right? Yeah, I came here when I was 11 years old. Um, I just learned the alphabet and maybe some basic words. What was it like to be an immigrant? Oh boy, yeah. I remember coming to the US, not knowing any English and having a lot of fears and worries, but I also think I was pretty excited. There's just so much about being a new place as a kid. You don't worry about a lot of things. What types of rules were you expected to follow when you got here? My parents definitely expected me to be uh, top of class, but at the same time, very respectful. Uh, there's this weird tension from, I think, immigrant family where you really have to stand out. You have to be the best in what you do, but you can't stand out that much. Hey, you should be good at certain things. You should be good at math. You should be good at music. You should be good at uh, listening to instructions. When did you start dancing? Uh, I didn't really make dancing my own until I discovered it after college. And things definitely took a turn when I started um, flowing my fitness dragon. So the first time I saw this flow dragon, this flow art uh, equipment, it was at a it was at a outdoor park. There was a music event that uh, my friends and I are organizing, and I remember seeing from afar that someone had a beautiful red light up dragon that he was just making these giant beautiful flowy circles around and my first reaction to that and, and I, I, I said it to my friend right next to me I said I must I must have that like I must be able to do that and perform that for others Ever since then, I just kept on piling more and more dragons. Uh, I just, I just wanted all kinds of different dragons. I wanted dragons that light up. I wanted red dragons, yellow dragons, blue dragons. I wanted shiny ones, and I wanted the ones that can glow in the dark. I know my parents didn't really encourage me or want me to dance because that seems like you're grabbing a lot of attention to yourself. What do you 
Can you tell us how your relationship with your parents and family evolved? Yeah, um, I started becoming more resentful because I felt like there were all these expectations and rules set for me that I didn't agree to. And I think over time, as I'm getting older, I started having my own job and my own life. I started to question a lot of the values that they had. Were there any particular memories you had struggled with? When I started working on this project, I was actually struggling with something happened when I was much younger um, under my parents' watch. I, um, something happened that made me kind of have to question, um, you know, who my, who my parents are and what yeah I guess I don't I don't really know how to talk about it <laughs> um, my my parents kind of just deny that it happened uh, I feel um, that my, my parents have betrayed a certain sense of trust that I thought I had because you know they're my parents I think the most frustrating part of this whole event and my process of understanding it is expectation that I, I shouldn't need to be talking about this. I should be able to just get over this. Like, the, you know, grow up, be a man. Don't, don't talk about this. Like it happened in the past, get over it, you know? And I think that's, that's really frustrating because that also combines with the Asian stereotype we were talking about earlier. There is, this idea of, you know, you should be able to hide everything behind a smile. You should fit in, you shouldn't ruffle the feathers. So don't talk about bad things. Just, you know, that expectation is, is so frustrating to me. Uh, Wait, what did you do to feel safer and better? The first thing I did is I went to some of my closest friends. I'm so fortunate that I have good friends who listened, who didn't judge, who didn't tell me what to do. Some of them just listened. Some of them just made me feel heard. I came to realize my relationship with my parents and with my friends aren't just as easy as, you know, books or movies describe it, that every human relationship is complex and full of stories. I think the thing I struggle with the most is the willingness to, to have honest conversations with people.
I think it's good to find some people listen first and then maybe give tips or tricks. But listen is really important. That can be yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I get it. Sometimes your friends want to help you. Uh, and they, they, they would love to solve the problem for you because they care about you. Um, but yeah, though, I feel like the older we get, if they can make me feel accepted and, and welcome, that's you know, sometimes more than the solution. That opens up doors. Can you tell us a little bit about we, what we can change still as a, as a group, as a, the world, as mm -hmm. every single human? Okay. I think the best thing that some of us can do is just to legitimize and just to listen to nature. Uh, you know, I'm not asking you to go out there and donate all your money to Greenpeace. I'm not asking you to go out there to stop using gasoline completely in your life. But the first step you can do is, is to go out there and and listen um, just as your friends and your family listen to you and make you feel heard you know can you listen to nature and and make nature feel heard um, and that's something we can all do we can all do by going outside motivation speak by way when i started doing this project it was very much inspired by things in my life that I was struggling with. And at the same time, it was inspired by the dragon dance that I do and the, the creative energy that I have. And I just want to let you know that if you also feel this tension of creativity and, and art and fun, but also stress and tension and you know things not going always going right for you, that it's okay. That it's good to go outside and, and sit with those thoughts and those struggles. Um, so I just want you to know that there are people out there willing to listen to you and, and that nature is willing to listen to you. I hope you find what it is that you're trying to find by going outside.